But concerning this reality about the oneness of the divine, the argument that the creator must be one is simple and far more comprehensive. If you say two or three or four, then uh, the Muslim always want to tell you be one, one. You know how you have to be one God. You know why you have to be one God? Am I? Uh, if people can live together, why God, God have to be a different law, a different thing, you know, why have to be one? And one, you know, if you say two, you have to be killed, you know, you can't say, you have to say one. You know what I mean, why? It's very dangerous, you have everybody say one. No, if you say two, people are going to look at you like you are something, you know, different. Why you said two, you know, why you said two? Said one, said one, Ashhadu Allah, said one, Ashhadu Allah. Said one, yeah, you can't say two, you know. You just said, if you said two, everybody gonna look at you. They don't like difference, you know. They have to be one. They don't like somebody different. It's not simple anymore to the universe. Interestingly, in Islamic thought, this has been discussed at length, and there is a unanimous conclusion that the universe is eternal. It began in the finite past, as originated, coming to be after not existing. Preceding by its own existence. Okay, let's see what Ibn Taymiyyah say. The Tabari, Safadiya, As Safadiya. He quotes from here. The first have to know here. The uh, Ibn Taymiyyah talking same as the Quran. Quran said Allah create everything, and His throne was in the water. He said here, Allah created the angel and aflaq, everything. He who created this one. And in Sahih al-Bukhari, in the Bukhari, and the Prophet said, they come to him, a people, and they ask him, you know, and they ask him who created Shay. When I said, Allah, he was the God. God was, and after, after him, there was nothing. وَقَبْلَهُ وَكَانَ And he was عرش, كان عرشه, His throne على الماء Meaning the water was before the creation of the universe So how this is possible? The water is out of this universe This water we have is out of this universe How this is possible? It mean that <laughs> وَكَتَبَ الذِّكْرِ And the Qur'an, he before he created the universe. This means this Qur'an is before he created the universe. وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ وَخَلْقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And then he make the, the sky and the earth. Qur'an, the Qur'an, and, uh, and the water, and the throne, and half of the universe was before the universe came in. So even how, if you believe in the Big Bang, how do you, water come in before the Big Bang? The water was there before the Big Bang. Uh, make, you know, try to understand this one. Now since we have shown that the universe must have a beginning, there are four logical explanations for how the universe began to exist. Number one. It was created via nothing. Number two, it created its... Who care if he created via nothing or something cause it? Nobody care. We live for a hundred, maximum hundred year, we're going to enjoy it. Well, I'm not going to follow some crazy uh, caravan man in the desert in 7th century. Number three, it was created by something else that was created. And number four, it was created by something... So who creates Allah? Yeah, he was there, but hey, how long he was there and who created? And if he was time, like he said in the hadith, clear, I am the dar, he is the time. You know, they mean the time was before the creation of the Big Bang. So how this is possible in your, if you think? Uncreated. So let's do this together. Could the universe be created via nothing? Well, first and foremost, what do we mean by nothing? By nothing we mean the absence of something, and in this case, deductively argued that the universe began, and therefore it was, it was once not there. There was an absence of the universe. This is undeniable due to the deductive nature of the argument. Uh, this guy doesn't understand even if he read the Quran. Let's see, let's see, see what he can say first. So based on our definition, I think we can conclude that the universe coming into being or existence by nothing is impossible on logical, rational, and I would even argue empirical grounds. But 12 minutes, you don't give us any proof from the Quran. You said Ibn Taymiyyah said, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah said that the water was, that's only you bring Ibn Taymiyyah, but Ibn Taymiyyah said that the water was before the Big Bang. How we solve this problem? You could 
discuss this mathematically, for example, what is zero plus zero plus zero? Yeah. It's never going to be three. Okay, it's no, it's going to be three in, uh, in the Islam. Let's see, let's discuss this one in the Islam. Ta'at-Tabari. Tafsir Tabari, Jamil Bayan, wa qawluhu. No, one, Tafsir Tabari al-Aya. The verse, the Surah 32. Verse 4. الله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وما بينهما في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش. Mean here he created the earth and the heaven in six days. Six days. Remember this one. ثم استوى على العرش. They may be seven days here. Okay, let's say seven days when he rests. Let's give them this. You know, give them this doubt and count here. We have seven. But he say السماوات والأرض. It mean all of them. I mean, he create the universe. He have to be in a, in a six days because his resting is not creation. Okay, he said here. Let's say what he said in another place. Well, uh, Surah forty one, Nuh, verse nine. He said, "Qul a innakum la takfuruna biladi al arda." The one who created the earth in two days. This is to put here two period, but no, it's wrong. Two days here. Ah, here. Two days. وجعل فيها رواسي من فوقها وبارك فيها وقدر فيها أقواتها في أربعة أيام. Four days. So we have six here. Four days and six. As this is, how much we hear? ثم استوى إلى السماء then he created the sky وقال لها وللأرض إيتيا طوعا وكرها آتنا طوعا فقضاهن سبع سماوات they make him seven skies في يومين two days how much we have here yeah. two four five eight so please go tell your, uh, your God uh, please just tell us exactly how long he created the, the earth and the universe. Is it one day? Is it seven? Or is it six? Or is it four? Or is it eight? Therefore, the universe could not have come into existence via nothing. As PJ Zwart in his publication About Time explains, if there is anything we can find inconceivable, it is that something could arise from nothing. Let's go to the next option. Could the universe create itself? Well, this implies that the universe was in existence and not in existence at the same time, which is an impossibility. Well, the God Allah was exist before the universe, so <laughs> so it is same uh, apply to to this matter who create the universe from nothing because Allah is nothing. He was there before the universe. He mean he's nothing. A crude example for you to picture in your mind. Ask yourself the question: Can your mother give birth to herself? Obviously not. So we know self-creation is... I don't know how you, can your mother give her birth to yourself. Silly question, you know, silly talking. I don't think even he read evolution or you know anything about evolution. He just said, can your mother give the birth for her for herself? You know? oh. a possibility. So the next option is, could the universe be created by something created? Well, I would argue as an ultimate... Ah, he found it, Allah explanation for how the universe began. This is illogical and irrational. Yeah. The universe could not be as a result of another universe, for example, or something else that was created because of the absurdity of an infinite regress. All Muslims appear to know everything, but they don't know nothing. Imagine this universe, universe one, being as a result of another universe, universe two, and universe two being as a result of another universe, universe three, and this one on ad infinitum, we would never have the universe today. Hence, the Islamic philosopher and thinker, Dr. Jafar Idris, summarizes this point. He said, this, Is this Jafar Idris make anything, make any theory, make any, we can see, we can, we can study, or are we going to just go into looking for uh, books and books? Are we going to find God in books? You're defending on God, you're not defending on science or, or philosophy. Science and philosophy is have nothing to do with, uh, with God. You know, so it's haram. Even the philosophy in Islam is haram. It says, there would be no series of actual causes. Yeah. Only a... Don't ask about something. If you know it, it will hurt you. 
does the Islam. Series of non-existence. The fact, however, is that there are existence around us. Therefore, the ultimate... Uh, Muslim, uh, Muslim always brag about facts, but we keep give them, give them a million facts about uh, Islam is wrong, but they're never going to take your facts. Uh, but always they have to, you have to give them, uh, keep give them fact and fact and fact, but they never go to follow your fact. That's why, uh, why I see that if you want to clean Muslim from Islam, it's by shock. This is the best, you know, way possible. Uh, if you start talking on uh, debates like this, that's why I said debates with Muslim is a waste of time. It's a clear waste of time if you debate a Muslim, because the Muslim, as soon as you start debate, you, you have he have to know first what's your background. Are you Tist? Are you Christian? Are you Buddhism? You know, he cannot start a debate with you if he doesn't know what's your background. If you tell him I don't believe any God, but I don't have any you know any background to attack me on. No, he gonna start building uh, a straw man for you, so he gonna attack him. Uh, he never going to stick to the subject. The subject is Islam versus theism. It's not science versus uh, theism. It's Islam versus theism. Cause must be something other than temporal causes. So I would argue that the final possible explanation, which is the universe was created by something uncreated is the most rational explanation. And the philosopher Abraham Vargi is in the appendix to Professor Andrew. You see, he's still going around, around in a circle without, you know, sticking to the subject. The subject is Islam versus theism. So you bring in philosopher have nothing to do with Islam. <laughs> the philosopher have nothing to do with Islam. All these people you quote, they have nothing to do with Islam. Only Ibn Taymiyyah you quote, and I show you Ibn Taymiyyah believe that the water, not just Ibn Taymiyyah, all Muslim believe because a Hadith Sahih and a Hadith Qudsi, not even Sahih. Hadith Qudsi is a second degree between, uh, between Hadith and Quran. That is Hadith Qudsi. You know, degrees uh, the power the, the, his degree the power is more than hadith but is less than quran what uh, when god speak to muhammad directly in the dream that's called hadith qudsi qudsi so that hadith is qudsi that the water was before the creation of the universe and the pen al qalam as well the pen was created before the universe the uh, uh, satan get, uh, get inside jannah how allah allow him to go inside and what if he all knowing why he created uh, the fire and the hell all this question you didn't answer you didn't go to and you go into argue about the philosophical point of view where you left your jacket of the islam where you left it there is a God, explains this conclusion in a simple but forceful way. He writes, if anything exists at all, there must be something preceding it that always existed. How did this eternally existing reality come to be? The answer is that it never came to be. It always existed. Take your pick, the God or the universe. Something always existed. Yeah, take your pick between gods and put inside them Allah. And how did you put God, gods in Allah? Allah have nothing to do with other gods, you know. Each god have to prove himself before start claiming thing. I can make my God and claim that he created the universe. You have no way I'm going to use your same your argument to prove my God. Same you're using now, I'm going to use my argument to prove my God. Nothing gonna end. You know, we're gonna stay here debating for uh, for uh, for days and years to come if you don't stick to the rules. Do you, you present in the Islam. So please talk about Islam, not about uh, philosophy and other opinions. Existed. And we've argued deductively that the universe began, therefore it couldn't have always existed. The beginning of the universe have nothing to do with Allah. Now this doesn't mean God exists. It doesn't mean Allah, Buddha, Jesus, Yahweh exists. Uh, okay, you come to the conclusion. Faith. Yeah. We leave that to the atheists. The point I'm trying to make... Why are you going to leave it? You have to prove it. You hear the, the, the title is Islam verse atheism so why are you going to leave this one to to atheist to to prove it yeah. is that if we continue if we continue with our rational argumentation 
using our aql, aql meaning aql. intellect in the okay. Arabic language as the language as the Quran, the Quranic discourse says, Afala taqilun, do you not use your brains? If okay, now he goes to the Quran discourse, the first uh, verse he bring we was waiting for him for how long 15 minutes just to bring this verse let's see what this verse say afala taqilun yes afalam yasiru fil ardi fatakuna lahum qulubun ya'qiluna biha heart yeah the heart is the the, the mind he had they have heart to remember to remember him ya'qiluna biha wa adan yasma'una biha the heart in the chest that's why how you think in the Islam you think about in your heart not from your mind like this guy want to tell us Quran is clear no we, we need don't need a surat what is one uh, surah 22 46 okay let's say Okay, this guy claimed that the Quran said that uh, that said we have a mind to, uh, to you know to think uh, with it. Let's see what the Quran says. This is the same verse he caught. Uh, just to remember you. Here, Let's see what he say. So, have they not? Uh, travel through the, the earth and have hearts yeah by which the reason you make the reason by your heart yeah and air but you wish here the air you hear he's clearly talking here about the, the function the function of the air is hearing but the function of the heart is reasoning for indeed is not uh, i that uh, are be blind but uh, blinded are that the hearts which are within the breast so guys your mind is in your uh, breasts yeah that's if it, that's how he think that's why he think like this because his mind is not in his, his head here no but he is here he's in his chest if we continue using our brains our mind we will conclude quran never say brains the minds quran always talking they have uh, like uh, like i think uh, like uh, dozens of verses talking about the heart the heart the heart only talking about the heart what he think never uh, i think hundreds of verses like this one it's something quite profound number one yeah we this uncreated creator must be eternal we found something profound that only muslim think about them heart never think about the mind that's why they always going backward by definition because he's uncreated number two he must be transcendent as ibn Taymiyyah, the 14th century philosopher and theologian said he must be distinct and disjoined from the universe for example if i were to create this lectern do i become the lectern uh, he said the clear hadith now you're talking about Allah but you you don't know him Allah said he is another uh, he said I am the dahar Ana. dahar in the Arabic is a zaman in the time that's why in the verse it's al dahriya when the dahriya said said they don't we not gonna die only by time so Allah is time number three this uncreated creator must have a will because if it's eternal and brought into existence a finite effect that began he doesn't have a will if he have a will why he proceed the question does god can, st can stop the time does god can have no like uh, the, the, the day of the judgment can he uh, like take out cancel the day of the judgment how he how he have a will if he have a will why he doesn't kill the satan why he left the satan even satan how he left him don't understand how he's willing and like the universe he must have chose the universe to come into existence and a choice indicates a will and a will indicates it can have a relationship with sentient beings in the universe number four it must be powerful it created the atom for example if you split the atom ask professor Krauss what happens 
He said Allah must be a powerful, but he's not too powerful to even fight for his, for his religion, not powerful to bring a, a strong argument by mind. So he need uh, to kill people or to follow him, people, other people to fight for him, you know, or to shout for him. And if he's powerful, why you standing down there and defending him? I don't understand. Contradict yourself, my friend. Fifth point. It must be perpetually knowing because if it's eternal and it established laws like the law of gravity, it implies it's a lawgiver. So therefore we can... Well, law of gravity, he said his throne was in the water before and we creating the universe. So <laughs> make that... The inference that is perpetually knowing or perpetually intelligent because it's eternal and created laws in the universe. Finally, it must be one. If we use the rational principle called Occam's razor, and by the way, many people don't understand Occam's razor, and I think Professor Krauss doesn't understand Occam's razor either when I read his book, but he could debate with me later. Occam's razor is not about physical causes, by the way, which has been misconstrued as a straw man in the Krausian fashion. Basically, Occam's razor... He's only using straw man when he needed an argument, but he's from the morning, he using the straw man to attack something, he doesn't exist. You know? He said we believe in the... We believe in the universe was forever down there, and we do this and we do that, and he is God only between all gods. Razor is must have a simple explanation. Arkham Razor as well. You know, what Arkham Razor have to do with Allah? But also you must have the most comprehensive, which means what? It actually means that it has, has to have greater explanatory scope and explanatory power, because it can be complex, because it may deal with most of the questions. See how shame, you know, people like this guy, how intelligent and how educated, but he believe in a donkey flying. Yes, he believe in a donkey flying and jinn. Their jinn as well is worse than donkey flying, because donkey flying, that's it for Muhammad, I will never go to see him. But jinn, they are existing with us here, and we don't see him, and everybody gets sick, and they, they say, well, until the school. Yeah, somebody like jinn can uh, live in people. But concerning this reality about the oneness of the divine, the argument that the creator must be one is simple and far more comprehensive. If you say two or three or four, then uh, the Muslim always want to tell you be one. We have to be one God. You know why have to be one God? Am I, uh, if people can live together, why God? God have to be a different law, a different thing. You know why have to be one? And one. You know, if you say two, you have to be killed. You know you can't say. You have to say one. You know what I mean? Why is very dangerous. You have everybody say one. No, if you said two, people are going to look at you like you are something, you know, different. Why you said two? Why you said two? Said one. Said one. Ashhadu an la ilaha. Said one. Ashhadu an la ilaha. Said one. Yeah, you can't say two, you know. You just said, if you said two, everybody going to look at you. They don't like difference to be one. They don't like somebody difference. It's not simple anymore, and it doesn't answer all the questions yeah. in actual fact. Yeah, always like a simple thing, you know. Everything has to be simple. It creates far more questions than it answers, such as how do yeah. two, three, four causes co-eternally exist? It doesn't well, make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense in your mind because you don't want to live with other people. But other people who want to survive, who want to live, they can make sense that it can be two, three, four people controlling one place and they live together. That's not, that's not a big deal. So I think we've concluded what the Quran concluded 1400 years ago. That yeah. Same arguments, what the Quran concluded 1400 years ago. We don't see anything, my friend. From what? How long now? How long now? 15 minutes, 17 minutes? You know, he didn't give no he anything. He's creator, he's one, he's unique, and he's transcendent. Yeah, like the where? Quran says in the 112th chapter, say, he is God, the one, the unique, God, the eternal, absolute. He begets not, nor was he begotten, and there is nothing like unto him. Let's see what is the proof he said in chapter 212. 112 is, I think, a shortest chapter. It would say, We can understand the first one is, uh, he said, Allah is the one. But we can understand as well the third one, He doesn't give birth, he give uh, a boy or nobody give him birth. Yani nobody beside him. Okay, but let's see what's the companion narrated to us about Allah as Samad. As -Samad. He said here, the absolute. 
Yeah, the eternal, the absolute, and here this said Allah is the refugee or, or eternal refugee. So let's see what's uh, in English. This said the without a beginning or end, lasting forever, always existing, opposite to term, terminal, terminal life. So who tell you this one? I don't understand. If you do in our website, there is nobody you know to control these people, just to say whatever to say to the people. You know, this is not the self. How did you know how they explain this verse? Salaf explained this verse. This is a Tabari. A Tabari uh, verse 2, yeah, chapter 112. Chapter 112. He said, Qul huwa Allah, Allahu as-Samad. Qawlu as-Samad, as-Samad mean Ibn Rabia, Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas is the first big Sahabi he said, Alladhi laysa lahu la jawfala, have no insight. The second Mujahid said, have no insight, the Musmat, the guy, somebody like a Satan, have no insight, no, have no gut, no stomach, nothing. A Mujahid as well, and Mansur said the same. A Mujahid said as well, and somebody have no insight. Uh, Mujahid as well again. Sufyan, same thing. Uh, Hassan and Hussein, the sons of uh, Ali as well, they say same thing. Ibn Jarir as well says same thing. The guy who have no inside. Uh, Shabi said the guy who doesn't eat or doesn't drink. Al-Dahak said the, somebody have no inside. Uh, An Amir, you know, and Ismail and Amir said the guy who doesn't eat the food. Al Musayyib said uh, the guy who doesn't have inside. Al Dahak said Ladi Dahadnu have inside. All the Salaf they was living with the Prophet. All of them, all of them. It tw about 20 here, and the Muslim only caught. The few Sahaba that say he is the guy who doesn't uh, have wallet, wallet. But would we this one? He doesn't born or somebody give him born. But this one is about uh, the, the verse three. Is not about the verse two. If uh, this this they'll do slate uh, scholar correction, try to correct the mistake and uh, make a relationship between this verse and this verse. No, no. This verse have some have a meaning in Arabic and Yulad. Uh, uh, have another meaning. So clearly the Salaf and uh, all Salaf agree upon that the Samad who the guy who have no inside. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. I'm soon coming with the third part.